Welcome all to another Foreign Film Friday. This video was supposed to be part of a series in Japanimation June where we reviewed some of Japan's greatest projects in the animated genre. I even had the gall to have a companion piece, Top 5 Studio Ghibli Films, to hype up what I could possibly pick for my number one. Anyone who knows me slightly could have guessed it's Princess Mononoke. It's one of my favorite films of all time, and while I don't think any film is perfect, this comes very close, being one of the true 10 out of 10 films I've rated. And that's what's led to this huge delay for what was supposed to be just a quick review. How on earth do I put into words why Princess Mononoke is one of the best all time? It felt almost disrespectful to not dive into every aspect that makes this Hao Miyazaki's best film. It was in this quest that I found myself searching for a rationale behind this. So without further ado, here is why Princess Mononoke is one of the best films of all time. Gods walk the earth. An epic battle rages between the encroaching civilization of man and the gods of the forest. When the forest has been cleared and the wolves wiped out, this place will be the richest land in the world. <laughs> Princess Mononoke comes to us from the prolific director Hao Miyazaki, and is his best film so far. I say this because it's impressive given his huge body of work that he's shown the world. There are definitely standout people who work to make Princess Mononoke spectacular. For example, this amazing art team that put together some breathtaking visuals, the talented voice cast both subbed and dubbed, and the terrific score that Joe Hisaishi puts together for this project, which hopefully will still be playing in the background because it's a phenomenal piece. However, in this video I'll be focusing on Miyazaki himself and why he's so important to the world of cinema. Miyazaki has his own unique perception on telling stories that in large part are why his films are so successful, and Princess Mononoke is no exception to this rule. In fact, it's the shining illustration of this unique storytelling. I've listed out key individual components that mark Miyazaki's films, and I thought no better way than let the man himself explain why I'm so drawn to his films. Modern life is so thin and shallow and fake. I look forward to when developers go bankrupt, Japan gets poorer, and wild grasses take over. This quote illustrates Miyazaki's view on the importance of nature, as this is a central focus in most of his films, nature oftentimes being shown as an unstoppable, peaceful force. Here Miyazaki is able to show off the importance of the world and the way we are slowly destroying it. It is through these peaceful moments that he's able to show the beauty that is found everywhere. He elicits this feeling of wonder and fondness for the outside world so brilliantly in projects like Castle in the Sky and Nausicaa. Here in Princess Mononoke, it is the rising action to our story. As the human world slowly pushes the animals away from their land, they begin to take it back slowly by force, to take back what's rightfully theirs. Princess Mononoke drags you into the story at the very beginning as the beast Nago battles our protagonist, Ashitaka. It sets the mood early that this is a different, more violent force of nature that isn't the same type we've come to expect from Ghibli. The forest spirit specifically is so bizarre in the best way possible. He is a calm spirit but eerily creepy and he's unlike any animal design I've ever seen. It's the simple creativity that Ghibli does time and time again that makes their world so expansive. It's the simple show-don't-tell that makes their story so grand and important. This partially overflows into the characters and how they interact so well, or more specifically my next point. I've become skeptical of the unwritten rule that just because a boy and girl appear in the same feature, a romance must ensue. Rather, I want to portray a slightly different relationship, one where the two mutually inspire each other to live, if I'm able to. Then perhaps I'll be closer to portraying a true expression of love. This is far and away my favorite aspect of Hao Miyazaki's career. He brilliantly writes female characters that just exist in a world without having to be a damsel or a princess. Instead, he focuses on making them compelling characters. While I don't mind love stories, in fact they're some of my favorite films, it sometimes feels a little weird to force love onto child characters. Instead, he makes a kind and supportive friendship that always leads to a great duo. Perfect examples of this are Porco Russo, Castle in the Sky, and Kiki's Delivery Service. Here in Princess Mononoke, Ashitaka and San are given a fantastic dynamic between each other. Right off the bat, Ashitaka sees just how animalistic San is as she has gone completely into the idea that she is a wolf. While the two start out majorly butting heads, it's through Ashitaka's compassion that they are able to slowly understand each other. Both of them allow for growth in their dynamic, as the two of them learn off each other, and their goals could not be accomplished without the other. 
While San is a flawed character, Ashitaka doesn't exactly have the most justifiable solutions to the problem at hand. There is complexity in these characters, and no one is true good or true evil, which leads me to my next point. You must see with eyes unclouded by hate. See the good in which is evil and the evil in which is good. Pledge yourself to neither side, but vow instead to preserve the balance that exists between the two. This is what makes Miyazaki's project so brilliant. Miyazaki has shown this balance of being able to find both of these sides in all types of life, which is something I think Spirited Away pulls off really, really well. In my latest watch with a friend who had never seen this, she noted that Lady Eboshi wasn't a bad character. She just went about accomplishing her goals in the wrong way. Lady Eboshi saves young women from brothels and gives them rewarding work. Although she gets too caught up in trying to kill the forest spirit, she eventually turns the corner realizing her mistakes. And the same can be said for San and the rest of the beasts, who are trying to reclaim their land by killing off the humans. Neither are wrong in their ideals, however both are consumed by this hatred which clouds their worlds. Look everyone! This is what hatred looks like. This is what it does when it catches hold of you. It's eating me alive, and very soon now it will kill me. Fear and anger only make it grow faster. This is what Ashitaka cries out as San and Eboshi square off. This is to further the point that there is no true evil person in this narrative. Instead, there are clashing sides that are letting the violence feed that anger. Miyazaki does something really interesting with his villains that make them never truly evil beings, but instead just lost in their ways, which makes for a way more compelling villain. My last point has less to do with Princess Mononoke and more to do with how Miyazaki as a person and why his unique perspective has made him such a force in the animated genre. The future is clear. It's going to fall apart. What's the use worrying? It's inevitable. This isn't necessarily what you'd expect from the creator of a lot of Ghibli classics. You tend to think a warm outlook on life with brilliant wisdom to offer, but here he simply gives us the dread that he fills with the ever-changing world, which is a dread I think all of us will experience at some point in our lives. There will be times where things seem pointless and already set in stone, which leads to the thought of meaninglessness in our existence. These aren't the messages you get from his projects, but I think it is through this lens that Miyazaki is able to make stories work so well. But his thoughts don't end there. Personally, I am very pessimistic, but when, for instance, one of my staff has a baby, you can't help but bless them for a good future, because I can't tell that child, oh, you shouldn't have come into this life, and yet I know the world is heading in a bad direction. So with those conflicting thoughts in mind, I think about what kind of films I should be making. Here we carefully see the reflection that goes through Miyazaki's head, and how that thought has shaped his career. He doesn't look at this negativity and want to put it on display, but rather he wants to find the means to inspire the next generation. I think this is why Miyazaki tasks himself with making his character accomplishments feel so fulfilling. There is something that he is able to do to inspire audiences to do greater things. This is expertly displayed in full effect with Jiro's passion in The Wind Rises. While I think I would give the edge to Jiro's drive, Princess Mononoke is able to show that same power with Ashitaka. Ashitaka is trying to overcome immense problems with the world, and he just wants to help himself out at the very start of this film and get rid of this evil that plagues him. And it's this weight of the story that carries with Ashitaka that I think makes the end feel that much greater. Without this internal conflict and defeats these characters go through, their wins wouldn't feel as meaningful. Miyazaki has inspired so many people, which leads me to my last quote that I'll end on. I wanted to convey this message to children that life is worth living. This message has not changed. Just two quotes ago, Miyazaki was talking about how life was doomed to fall apart. However, this isn't what he wants to give his audience. Even through this pessimism he has, he doesn't share that same message with children. Instead, he inspires them with the most important truth there is, that life is worth living. And it is through his projects that he's able to give this message to his audience. So many children have grown up on Ghibli classics and in turn have been inspired in some way. I never watched any of Miyazaki's works as a kid. Spirited Away just scared me too much every single time I tried to watch it. But even now, his projects are still important and affecting to me. Just these past couple weeks, everything in my life just made me feel like I was drowning in an ocean with nowhere to go. And there are going to be times where we feel like this. There are always going to be instances where you feel like a speck in the infinite world. With this doomed future that is looming, it can seem pointless. While this looms on the mind of Miyazaki, he in turn tries to motivate a new generation generation about why the gift of life is so important. All of his films are an amazing pick-me-ups on a gloomy day, 
and they just have a nice feeling associated with them. I say this as someone who has turned to Miyazaki's works when I'm feeling low, and I can't thank this man enough for the amazing work he's put together. How Miyazaki has been pivotal in legitimizing the animated genre. He showed off a completely different voice that would go on to make some of the best films in that genre. Princess Mononoke being the true standout, and I can't thank him enough for this incredibly made film. So that's the video which wraps up Foreign Film Friday's Japanimation June in July. I say July as I'm hoping I finish editing this video before August. Um, the clock is ticking though. Again, this took way longer than expected as such a giant task of covering Princess Mononoke felt impossible for a while. This longer form might be more likely to happen on this channel from here on out. While it is a bit of a task to put everything together, it definitely led to a more engaging reflection on myself for why this man who makes cartoons is so important and influential in my life. There's still going to be Foreign Film Friday videos, however, these long form ones do take a little bit longer, so it will probably be another month till anything like this comes up. If you guys like this video, give that thumbs up a little boop and that subscribe a big old hug. Let me know your thoughts on this film or any of Miyazaki's works. I was able to gather a lot of information on people's rationales for their favorite Studio Ghibli film, and it definitely led to some fascinating answers. Surprisingly, a lot of Whisper of the Heart fans. Anyways, I've been Hay, and this is another Foreign Film Friday in the books. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs>